land. We uh, appreciate you tuning in, and as we start our worship here in just a few minutes, I have just a few announcements that uh, I need to make to kind of get us update on the sick and shut in and uh, other announcements. First, on our sick and shut in, uh, update on uh, Tom Massick. Uh, as you know, it was announced Wednesday that he had the virus, uh, but good news. He uh, was supposed to go home yesterday. Uh, from what we heard, I think he did, but we will check on that today for sure. So he was 81 years old and he overcome it. So that's good news. Uh, glad to hear that. So that's a positive. So, um, Virginia Sherman called and, or let us know that uh, we uh, have prayers for her, uh, for Darren, which is the brother-in-law of her. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Let me read this again. Virginia Sherman has the church has asked the church to pray for Darren, the brother-in-law of Virginia's friend Janie Smith. Darren recently had a heart attack, so we need to remember Darren at this time. Also, uh, Pat Tallery's sister, uh, Terry Groves, now has cancer in her other lung and is requesting prayers of the church. So we need to remember Terry Groves also. Um, the seminar with Brother Kyle Butt has been canceled. Uh, that was to happen April the 24th through the 26th. But as you know, with this pandemic that we're having, we're not going to be able to have that. We're going to try our best to reschedule it for 2021. As of right now, he's pretty full. As of now, he's full, but he's looking for dates, so maybe we can work him in 2021. That's what we're shooting for for uh, the uh, science seminar. Uh, that is all that I have as far as announcements. Again, uh, let's remember the power of prayer. We, you know, we all have that ability. We should be doing that daily. Uh, and as we get ready to enter our worship service, let's, let's remember that. Frankie's going to lead us in prayer here in just a few minutes. Logan's going to be our song leader again today. Uh, we will have the songs on PowerPoint, so you'll be able to follow along and sing. Uh, I will have the scripture reading for, before the communion. Uh, Frankie will have the scripture reading before the lesson. And closing prayer be Andrew Kibbe. So at this time, let's get our minds prepared as we are to worship our Heavenly Father. Thank you. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful for blessing our lives with, with another Lord, Lord's Day. This opportunity that we can worship you. And we pray that our worship this morning will be in spirit and in truth. We continue to pray for our church family that's undergoing doctor's procedures and health issues, those that are listed in, in our bulletin daily and on our website. And dear Heavenly Father, for those that were mentioned this morning, we just pray a, a special prayer and blessing upon those folks and the doctors that are ministering to their needs. For our nation, we, we continue to pray for our nation and those that are affected by this this pandemic and just help us to to be strong in the faith be anxious for nothing help us to look to your word daily to guide our lives and help us to draw strength from from your word daily those that we can reach out to that we that we're not able to to see and meet with physically we just pray that we can be supportive of of family and friends and brothers and sisters in christ and whatever we can in that capacity we pray for our leaders that during these times that they will look to your word for all the decisions that are made that impact our lives every day and just pray that they will, will have the wisdom and the courage to do the things that are according to your will. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for your word, the guidance and instruction that it gives in our daily lives. Help us to be more diligent in our study. And dear Heavenly Father, at these times, again, we can draw comfort. If we will just do as we have been commanded to do, 
And dear Heavenly Father, we're, we're so blessed by your son, your love, his love, coming to this earth to live before us a perfect life to follow. And dear Heavenly Father, yet he died that cruel death on Calvary's cross for our sins. And help us to never take this blessing for granted, knowing that all blessings, all spiritual blessings are in your Son. And dear Heavenly Father, we pray for those that, that are hearing this prayer this morning, if there are any out there that have, that have yet to obey the gospel, that have yet to put your Son on in baptism, we pray that through the lesson that they will hear today from Brock and through their personal study that, that they will find the need and dear Heavenly Father, and they will act on that need. And we just pray that again that, that your will will be done in all things and that you'll forgive us when we sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to add on what we just heard prayer. Pray that if there's anybody out there, we want them to know that our doors will be open. If anybody wants to obey that gospel, we'll meet them here. We'll meet you here. And we'll baptize you in the name of Jesus. So just with that in mind, we don't want to think that you can't obey that gospel because of this pandemic, because you can't. Thank you. The first song today will be number 171. Number 171. After this, we'll have the scripture reading before the Lord's Supper. We'll sing the first and third stand. When I survey the scripture reading before we observe the Lord's Supper will be taken from Luke chapter 23 verses 27 through 38 Luke chapter 23 verses 27 through 38 I'll be reading from the King James And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps that never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, and the malefactors one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, 
the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And the superscription also was written over him in the letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Let's all pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this time in our worship. We can now gather around the Lord's table. We pray and give thanks for this bread, which represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that died on the cross for our sins. We pray now for those who are about to partake, that they would do so in a manner well-pleasing and acceptable to Thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us give thanks for the cup. Heavenly Father, we come before you now thanking you for this fruit of the vine which represents Christ's shed blood upon the cross for our sins. Heavenly Father, we pray that you'll be with each and every one of us as we reflect back to the cross and remember the great love that you and your son had for us. And may we examine our lives. May we examine ourselves and may we partake of this in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable to thee. In Christ's name we pray. We now have opportunity in this part of the worship service to give back, to lay by in store as we've been prospered. And let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, as we come before you now, we come before you thanking you for all the many blessings of life. Heavenly Father, we realize that all good things come from above. And dear Lord, we just pray as we lay by in store, as we've been prospered, that we will be mindful of the great blessings that we have through your son, Jesus. We just pray that you be with us, help us as we give. We thank you for our physical blessings, for our life, health, and strength. We just pray that you continue to bless us, be with us, and the things that we give will be used to further thy gospel in Davidson County and throughout the whole world. In Christ's name we pray. The next song will be number 620. Number 620. After
after this, we'll have the lesson scripture, and then we'll have the lesson. We'll sing the first and third stanza. Redeemed to I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed, redeemed, His child and Scripture reading this morning before the lesson will come from the book of Psalm, chapter 22, verses 1 through 10. That's Psalm 22, verses 1 through 10, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear, and in the night season, and am not silent. But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried to you, and were delivered. They trusted in you, and were not ashamed. But I am a worm, and no man, a reproach of men, and despised by the people. And all those who see me ridicule me. They shout out the lip, excuse me, they shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. But you are he who took me out of the womb. You made me trust while on my mother's breast. I was cast upon you from birth. From my mother's womb you have been my God. From time to time, probably everyone has the tendency to feel abandoned, even forsaken. Right now, even as we speak, some might feel as though they're isolated, alone, and condemned to exist in what might seem to be solitary confinement forever. Some might bear great emotional pain while others suffer in silence from physical trauma suffered many years ago, great or small, everyone experiences adversity. That's the truth of the matter. Wait and see. Though we're often too busy focusing on our own troubles, Jesus Christ experienced pain to a degree that many of us will never even attempt to comprehend, much less undergo. So what was our Lord's attitude in adversity? How well did He bear up under the load of trials concerning people and concerning circumstances. Well, we're going to find out some today from Psalm 22. Our sermon this morning is entitled, The Agony of Jesus. There are three things that we want to accomplish this morning. We're going to be in Psalm 22. And in Psalm 22, verses 1 through 21, here we're going to see the pain. By that we mean the agony experienced by Jesus while upon the cross. In verses 1 through 10 of Psalm 22, this is the emotional pain that our Lord experienced. Look at Psalm 22 and verse number 1. The Bible says, My God, my God, 
Why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Now, the first part of this verse was quoted by Jesus while upon the cross and recorded by two different inspired writers of the New Testament. Matthew 27, 46, Mark 15, 34. And this part, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me, seems to have had no direct application to David at all. Now, the concept of being Jesus, of Jesus rather being forsaken by his father, which make no mistake, happened in at least some sense, is probably one of the most challenging aspects of the Bible to fathom, much less to attempt to explain it. Do you ever know Jesus to be wrong? I never have known Jesus to be wrong. And when Jesus said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. He was right about it in at least some sense. Now, ask me to explain it more than that. I don't know what I can say other than I know Jesus wasn't wrong. And I know the inspired writer here, probably David, it really had no application to him. He was looking forward like David himself was upon the cross, though he wasn't. It's one of the amazing marvels of inspiration. Now, here's one simple thing that can be stated. Jesus knows what it feels like. To be forsaken and abandoned. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. So says John 1 verse 11. His own familiar friend betrayed him. That was Judas Iscariot. Matthew 26 verses 47 to 56. And Peter denied him three times. Mark 14, 66 to 72. Do you feel forsaken? Do you feel abandoned? Guess what? Our Lord knows how you Because our Lord experienced that exact emotional pain while upon the cross. We won't go through every verse. We don't really have the time, but skip forward in Psalm 22 to verses 7 and 8. Did you pay attention to this? The Bible says in Psalm 22, 7, All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. Now David is the inspired writer of this psalm, but there is no indication this applied to David. Now anyone who's read the Bible knows that this happened when? While Jesus hung upon the cross. Matthew 27, 39 to 44. Jesus had already declared in the context of his crucifixion that more than 12 legions of angels were available to him. What can we learn from this? Words did not break out. Jesus didn't fold under the pressure of people ridiculing him and laughing at him and mocking him. Do you see a lesson there? I believe we can. We don't need to let words break us. No matter what people say, they're going to laugh. They're going to do whatever they do. And they did our Lord that way. So what can we tell about our Lord's pain? He experienced great emotional pain. And he bore un up under that load successfully. And since he did it, I can do it. And we all can do it. Now in verses 11 through 22, here we're going to see the physical pain. Now on the one hand, our Lord experienced emotional pain. But that's not the whole of the story, is it, so to speak? He experienced great physical pain. Let's pick up in verse number 14 of Psalm 22. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. Now, all those really seem to be figures of speech indicating that Jesus was exhausted and in extreme physical pain. At what point in his life? Up to and including his crucifixion at Calvary, Golgotha. Look at verse 15. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. 
And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. You know, Jesus was also suffering from severe thirst. It is not one of the seven sayings of our Lord from the cross? I thirst. John 19, 28. Imagine being so exhausted. Your mouth so dry that, the, that your tongue seems to just stick wherever it goes in your mouth. On top of the emotional pain, look at the physical pain our Lord suffered and perhaps one of the saddest parts, but also one of the most beautiful parts when you really understand it is in verse number 16. For dogs, now that, that's not literal four-legged animals, there's a people. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. Did you know this was in the Old Testament? Did you know that the Old Testament, it's like David saw this. And in essence, he did. By inspiration, they pierced my hands and my feet. You know, the literal hands and literal feet of our Lord were pierced with nails which caused him to be suspended between heaven and earth on a tree. Acts 10, 39. Generally, we know this process a little bit better. Hands, feet, nailed to a tree. What do we know that as? Don't we generally know that as crucifixion? That's what happened to our Lord. He was crucified. How does the Bible express that in the Old Testament? They pierced my hands and my feet. Now, most claim that death by crucifixion takes two or three days. I don't know whether that's true or false. But most claim that when you were crucified or when a person was crucified, it would normally take two to three days for them to die. Which could explain why Pilate marveled that Jesus died only after a few hours. Mark 15 and verse 44. What can we see from the Old Testament? What can we see from Psalm 22? Verses 1 to 21, at least looking at a few of them. Our Lord experienced pain. He experienced emotional pain, but He also experienced great, intense physical pain. He suffered. Now the second part of this sermon is really the second part of this psalm. In Psalm 22, beginning in verse 22, going all the way through verse 31, this will be the praise. Now you'd think, with all this suffering, with all this agony, how does anything good come out of this? Well, this would be the praise, and now by that we mean joy experienced by members of the church of Christ. Blow your mind what these inspired writers, even of the Old Testament, saw by inspiration. In verses 22 to 27, the praise is to be experienced in worship. Look at verse 22. See if this sounds even remotely familiar because if you've ever read or studied the book of Hebrews, you'll say, I, re I read that in the New Testament. Psalm 22, 22, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation. You know how that's translated in Hebrews 2, 12? The church will I praise thee. Now even to the most casual of readers, a distinct change is observable from this verse to the end of the psalm. Despite the horrible agony experienced by Jesus, triumph was on the other side of the cross. For the third time probably. Hebrews 2 verses 11 and 12 applies this verse to Jesus and shows its perpetual fulfillment in the New Testament church. Isn't it amazing how David spoke about Jesus? Well, that's not all that David spoke about. David also spoke about not just the head of the church. He spoke about the body. The church. Look at verse 26. How do we know this is about worship? Verse 26. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek Him. Your heart shall live forever. You know what true worship does? True worship satisfies the hearts of all true worshipers through the offering up of spiritual sacrifices. You recall 1 Peter 2 and verse 5? The meek shall eat and be what? How do we eat in worship? 
We offer up spiritual sacrifices. 1 Peter 2 and verse number 5. Look at verse 27. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord and all the kindreds of the nations, perhaps even the idea there's the Gentiles, shall do what? Worship. Worship before thee. Now true New Testament worship unites brethren all over the world of all time. You know why? Because we're all one in Christ. Galatians 3, 26 through 29. So the praise, do you see the praise? It occurs in worship in verses 22 to 27. And now in verses 28 through 31, the praise occurs in the kingdom. In the kingdom. Look at verse 28. For the kingdom is the Lord's. And he is the governor among the nations. You know, the kingdom is the place of reward based upon relationship. It is the place of the attention and the affection of the Godhead. You know, the New Testament makes it clear that the kingdom is here. And guess what else? The kingdom is the church of Christ. Matthew 16, 18 and 19, Colossians 1 13 and 14. Do you see the praise? The first part of the psalm is pain, but then when you begin to look at it, there's praise that comes on the other side of this. How can this be? Because something happened to that cross that caused really everyone who understands reason to rejoice. Look at verses 30 and 31. A seed, a posterity, some descendants seems to be the idea. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born that he hath done. This is amazing. You know, the church of Christ will continue forever to exist somewhere on this planet. Did you know that? Daniel prophesied that in Daniel 2 and verse 44. The stone cut out of the mountain without hands is going to exist. It's going to be somewhere forever. How long are we going to keep it? Right here. That depends on how well we teach our children. On how well we teach our seed, our descendants, our posterity. So if we desire for the church to continue at this location, we're all going to have to educate our own children. David saw that by inspiration. Looking forward. These same principles are taught all throughout the Bible. That the parents are to teach their own children. If we don't have time to do that now, we ain't never going to have it. If we don't make time to do it now, when are we going to ever have the time to get it done? We talked about the pain. We have talked about the praise. Now, so what? Let's talk about, in the third place, the prophet. That is the P-R-O-F-I-T. The prophet. That is some benefits of Psalm 22. And really the agony of Jesus. For, that we can take from this sermon and apply to our lives today. We want to suggest three things. Number one, we want to suggest the value, the value of the Old Testament. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Does that sound familiar? It doesn't mean. Romans 15, 4. Now anyone who discredits or seeks to disvalue or devalue rather the Old Testament is either misguided or malicious. You know, we can learn so much about Jesus and the church, even from the Old Testament. We got to see, we got to look at the New Testament to see how the Old Testament applies, but there's so much value from the Old Testament. We need to get in there and we need to dig it out. It's there, and we know it's there, but have we been digging it out and understanding it the way that God would desire? I hope so. Word number two. Or thought number two would be the virtue. That would be the virtue of Jesus through the pain. For even hereunto were ye called. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. That ye should follow his steps who did no sin. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not but committed himself to him that judgeth, judgeth rather righteously, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, 
that we being dead to sins might live unto righteousness. Here's something we all need to remember. By whose stripes? Does that sound familiar? That sounds pretty familiar to me. That's 1 Peter 2, 21 to 24. Now on an individual level, we can all learn how to handle adversity both of an emotional type and of a physical nature from Psalm 22. So let's not forget, number one, who we are. And let's not forget, number two, whose we are. During this challenging and, in fact, strange period of human history. Thought number three, word number three, would be the victory. And that would be the victory of both Christ and the church. I am he that was dead and am alive. And behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. So said Jesus in Revelation 1.18. So Christ is victorious, but what about the church? Well, have you thought about Revelation 14.13? And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Christ is victorious. Guess what? We read ahead. The church is victorious. We can conquer the adversities and tribulation of this world because our Lord Jesus Christ holds the authority over life and death. Are you ready to serve? Serve Him wholeheartedly in spite of the adversity, in spite of... Feeling abandoned in spite of feeling forsaken. Are we ready to serve him with the whole heart? You know, it's natural to feel abandoned, forsaken, isolated, and alone. But guess what? In Christ, you never. No one is alone in Christ. And even when we are alone and in isolation from our perspective, let's do our best to handle the adversity just like Jesus did. There's a place where the agony never ends. And there's a place where the bliss never ends. Where would you rather? Would you rather go to the place where there is unending, unceasing agony? There's no such thing as time and eternity. Or would you rather go to the place where the bliss, the glory of the Godhead is always there and will never cease because there's no such thing as time and eternity? Do we know how to avoid the one and enter the other? You've got to hear the gospel, Acts 18. 8. Believe the gospel, Acts 16, 31. Repent of sin, Acts 17, 30. Confess Jesus Christ to be the Son of God, Acts 8, 37. Be immersed in water for the remission of sins, Acts 2, 38. Then you're a Christian. Once you become a Christian, it's time to behave as a Christian. You know how we behave as Christians? We walk in the light. As the Godhead is in the light, that means we do what the New Testament teaches for the, New, for the reasons that the New Testament teaches us to do it. We shun what the New Testament teaches to be wrong, 1 John 1, 7 to 9. But even the best of servants get mixed up. And servants sin. Well, what happens when the servants, the Christians, sin? Acts 8, 22. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness and pray. If perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven. We love you. Time let's pray together as we're dismissed in prayer. Our dear Lord, Father in heaven, come to you now in prayer, thanking you for this opportunity that we have had to take in this worship service. Please let each one that's done so, done so in spirit and in truth. Please be with us, Lord, now as we're mindful of the times that, that we're going through, and uh, please be with all those who uh, are sick and undergoing doctor's care, and be with all the people in the world and help them to get over the virus and help us to move past this time so we might get back to normal soon. Please be with us as we are as we are in quarantine and lockdown and all this, that we don't neglect our spiritual lives. Please let us focus on the things that, that are always important 
which is our spiritual which is our spiritual selves and please let us prove study more and teach our children while we're at home and have the opportunity please be with us lord and help us to help us to remain strong and healthy that we might continue to worship you whenever we have a chance especially especially now today be with us as we leave this place give us our sins help us to always live in accordance with your will that we might win others to your service in christ's name we pray amen